Gavin Williamson is a Tory MP who fails a lot, but by some kind of miracle, only ever upwards. In 2019, he was fired as Theresa May's defence secretary. That was after being accused of leaking information from the National Security Council to the press. Yet less than three months later, with Boris Johnson then in charge, he was put in charge of our kids' education. In that role, he failed to get laptops to kids during lockdown. He opened schools for one single day at the height of the pandemic before closing them again. And he was ultimately sacked after causing a complete fiasco over A-level results. Under his watch, algorithmic marking resulted in poorer marks for state school pupils than their teachers had projected, and much better marks for those at private schools. And yet, somehow, Gavin Williamson ended up with a knighthood. And now, with Rishi Sunak in charge, Sir Gavin has found himself once again on the front line of politics as a minister without portfolio. Yet surprise, surprise, within a month of that appointment, Williamson has found himself again in hot water. That's because, besides being useless, Williamson is a bit of a bully too. The former chief whip, Wendy Morton, has made a formal complaint against him, accusing Williamson of sending abusive and bullying messages to her. And the WhatsApp chats have been leaked. The first set of messages relates to the Queen's funeral. Williamson, at the time, just a random backbencher MP, was pretty annoyed that he hadn't bagged an invitation. In what you're about to see, PC stands for Privy Councillor. It's a title that goes to all previous cabinet members, amongst others, other people as well, so leader of the opposition, etc. There are currently 743 members of the Privy Council, so it's not that special. And Williamson's texts are on the left in blue, Morton's are on the right in pink. Williamson says, think very poor how Privy Councillors who aren't favoured have been excluded from the funeral, very poor, and sends a clear message. And Wendy Morton replies, that is not the case, Gavin. He says, well, certainly looks it, which is very shit and perception becomes reality. Also, don't forget, I know how this works, so don't puss me about. And she says, as I said above, that's simply not the case, Gavin. The number of places allocated was extremely limited. Gavin didn't like that. He says, it's very clear how you are going to treat a number of us, which is very stupid. And you are showing F all interest in pulling things together. Don't bother asking anything from me. I don't know what you'd want to ask from the guy. I can't follow through on anything. Anyway, he then goes on. Also, this shows exactly how you have rigged. It is disgusting you are using her death to punish people who are just supportive. Absolutely disgusting. (laughs) This is Gavin Williamson making the Queen's death about himself. Gavin, again, this is not the case whatsoever. Well, let's see how many more times you F us all over. There is a price for everything. (laughs) Now, (laughs) there is a price for everything. That's the most sort of like threatening bit. What does that even mean? The second conversation happened when Williamson decided not to turn up for a commons vote. So Wendy Morton says, Morning, Gavin. I hear from your whip. You are probably not voting this evening. Is there a problem? We are on a free line whip. Thanks. And Williamson responds, Thank you for the patronising and condescending tone. You're welcome to come and see me and explain. Best wishes. He goes on, you do know you can speak to people in your job. You don't just text them. And I think that's pointed there because Gavin Williamson used to have her job. Um, Wendy Morton then replies, there is absolutely no need for you to take this tone, Gavin. I am trying to help. And he says, how are you? And she says, I'm fine. (laughs) Then, then Then he responds, no, how are you helping? But very glad you are fine. Look at my voting record. Step back and think how you are dealing with people and then maybe talk to people. I am currently with my poorly dog at the vets. So I will give you some time to reflect on how you are dealing and treating people. And then she says, I need no lecture from you, Gavin. When I ask a civil question, I will call you later. She seems very, she has a lot of self-control, I think, in that exchange. An entertaining exchange in a way. Apparently, though, you know, this is a serious topic as well, because Williamson has form when it comes to being particularly aggressive um, with women colleagues. A Tory minister has now spoken to the Times about her experience with Williamson. And the paper reports, the Tory MP who told the Conservative Party at the weekend that she was willing to discuss the matter said that Williamson had called her into his office when he was chief whip in 2016. At the time, she was campaigning on an issue that was causing the government difficulty. During the meeting, Williamson is said to have raised a sensitive issue about her private life, which she interpreted as a tacit threat. Allies of Williamson denied that he had been trying to silence the MP and said he had raised the issue in a pastoral capacity. <laughs> in a past- <laughs> I was just genuinely interested this particularly embarrassing fact about her um, might be something she'd like to talk to me about. Nothing cynical or sinister or threatening going on there, although there is a price for everything.
I just want to show you a photo now. So this shows Williamson, who had previously been Chief Whip himself, posing with a bullwhip on his desk. Perched across it is a little red book. Now, it was widely interpreted as a message to Tory MPs after the A-level disaster. I know your secrets, so you'd better say stay on side or, or not mock me relentlessly in public. Rishi Sunak has condemned Williamson's messages, calling them, quote, not acceptable. Very tough words there from Sunak. He has also said this, though. He, he quote, has full confidence in the minister, um, which makes you wonder, what does Williamson have on Sunak? I suppose that's my question for you, Ash. Red book, whip. What would happen to Rishi Sunak if he kicked Williamson out of his cabinet? Oh, oh, I know. Is it that he's really five foot two? Um, is it is it that he he wears lifts in his shoes? Is it that he used to work for Willy Wonka and he oversaw the horrendous deaths of I think three or four children because of lax workplace safety rules? What I find really funny about this news story, other than the fact that Gavin Williamson has sort of molded himself on a cartoon villain and is also not quite executing it in a way which makes you think he's a competent villain he's kind of more like dick dastardly so he's like ah, i'll win the wacky races one of these days hold on, hold on, hold on. like you know what i mean he just sort of seems like he's trying to be menacing and, and and not quite um landing it but the other thing which i find really funny is the fact that this is now all coming out and you've got all you know sorts of lobby journalists now going oh my god this is absolutely awful did you know that the whipping operation in political parties was based on bullying um and and of course they all knew that the whipping operation was based on bullying and when it comes to things like helping gavin williamson pose with you know a red book and a bullwhip on his desk they're actually quite happy to participate in some of those dark arts themselves like they're political operators rather than a conduit for information to the public and i think what's happened now is that after you know liz trust got defenestrated within a single menstrual cycle the lobby are like hang on we can kind of determine who's in and who's out and gavin williamson he's out these kinds of behaviors of blackmail, using embarrassing uh, personal details, abusive language, this is nothing new when it comes to whipping operation. I mean, I remember, I think it was in an article by John McTernan, he was talking about in Tony Blair's first term in power, a junior minister was walking around the parliamentary estate and one of the whips uh, was walking past him grabbed him by the bollocks and like kind of had him up against the walls and twisted and was like, you've not done anything to upset me, son. So just imagine what I'll do if you ever cross me. And this was something which was written up in a way which is kind of like, oh, what a titillating anecdote. Um, whereas I'd be like, that's not okay behavior in a workplace. Like that's, that's objectively insane. So for me, the issue is less is Gavin Williamson a very nasty person? I mean, obviously he is. Otherwise, he would never have been chief whip. It's actually, are there going to be standards which are enforced across the board so you actually try and change the culture of Westminster for the better? Or is it merely going to be whoever finds themselves on the outside, who's no longer considered one of us for whatever reason. So suddenly they're the one being pulled up for something which everyone knew about before and is still going on. Mm -hmm.